with us exclusively along with her attorney, Terrence, or Terry Hoffman. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. Audrey, let's just go back over this for a moment. The police officer stops you. He says it's because you're on your cell phone. You explained to him, no, actually, I was just leaning my hand. That's what it right. was. And he won't listen to that. He then says, well, whatever, you're also guilty of speeding. Right. Take me from that point on. Um, well, I think that um, I was driving with my hand um, on my cheek, and I think that that's what he saw. And after I had um, given him the chance to uh, look in my purse, you know, check for a cell phone, then he manufactured the ticket with speeding. And again, I told him that he was, you know, wrong. I wasn't speeding either. And, uh, and then we went back and forth, and um, I said I wanted to see the tape. I wanted him to show me that I had been speeding. Now, he's walking back to the car. You did something that a lot of people might not do. I mean, anyone who's been stopped by the police knows you probably shouldn't get out of the car unless an officer tells you to. Right. Um, why did you decide to do that? Because I wanted to see the tape. I knew that he uh, was lying. I knew that I wasn't speeding. I knew that I wasn't on the cell phone. And I wanted him to show me the tape. Did you get belligerent with him at all? <clears throat> not at all. Not at all. I never swore. I, um, my hands were not, you know, flailing or whatever. Flailing away. Um, I posed no, no threat to him. And is that when he presented the taser in front of you, when you, as you were approaching his car? Well, I never moved from my vehicle. Um, I, I just stepped out. Um, as a matter of fact, he came towards me um, rather than I going towards him. Um, I don't remember if he said that I was under arrest before the taser or after. Um, a lot of it is still kind of a blur. Well, so much is happening so quickly. You did did get back in the car. In fact, your 15-year-old son, I guess, told you, Mom, get back in. Yes, yes, he did. And, and then the police <coughs> officer pulled you out? Yes, correct. He, he wanted to arrest me, and um, so after I got in, he wanted me back out again. Instead of just leaving it, I got back in my car. Um, it should have been over right there. And I wouldn't have reacted like I did if I was on my cell phone or I was speeding. Um, I knew that he, um, either he was having a bad day or whatever. Um, he knew that I wasn't doing those two So things. you're you're eventually tasered twice, correct? Yes. The first time, um, it, it just bounced off my jacket or um, it didn't penetrate into my skin. The second one actually penetrated into my skin. And I know prior to this, you, you said to the police officer, don't do this in front of my children. You were pleading mm -hmm. before the, the taser actually occurred, before he tasered you. Right. What's happening with your kids? You have a five-year-old daughter in that car and a 15-year-old son. Yeah. Um, my daughter was crying. Um, I heard her saying, Mommy. Um, and afterwards, my son said that she was, you know, really crying hysterically and wanting to know what happened to mommy. And then, of course, she wanted her daddy because um, she's daddy's girl. And um, she knew that I wasn't going to be able to come to her, so then she wanted dad. Um, but the disturbing part is they were left in that <coughs> car for almost 40 minutes. And for there was periods of time where they were alone. And, um, and where were you at that point? You're I was in the back of Andrew's um, patrol car. Handcuffed. Handcuffed. Mm -hmm. You eventually ended up in the hospital. Did you need medical attention? Um, <coughs> well, the EMT, the ambulance, came to the scene to remove the um, probe from me. And then they asked me if I wanted to go to the hospital, and I said yes. And then that's where they um, did it, made sure that my heart was pumping. Yeah, Terry, I know you were saying the officer is off patrol duty at this point. The DA has said that we're not going to prosecute Audra at all. But you are you're pursuing this as a civil case. Why? Well, <laughs> Meredith, there's, uh, there's uh, several reasons. Uh, in fact, that's <clears throat> one of the reasons is why we're here this morning. We're not here to um, try the case. Uh, you know, there'll be a court proceeding. Um, the defendants will be there and will be permitted to give their evidence. But <clears throat> the issue here really is much broader than Audra's case. The reason why we're here is because tasering has become a problem not only locally. I found out that uh, a man in Onondaga County was killed by a taser within the last year. So but this it's is a really problem. to bring awareness then? Around One of it is bring, right. bring awareness and also to uh, perhaps 
awareness not only uh, that anybody could be a potential victim, but awareness to the police officers who have the tasers to be a little more uh, judicious and uh, think it out a little bit more yeah. before they use this uh, kind of a device. And then the overall picture is whether or not tasers themselves should be should used, be used, used should in be law used. enforcement. All right, Mr. Hoffman, I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you so much. Okay. Order as well, thank you so much thank for joining you. us this morning. Okay. And now let's get a check of the weather from Al.